On your side tonight, tracking the fallout from a North Carolina political stunner. The news that longtime Democratic State House Rep Tricia Cotham from Mecklenburg County is switching to a Republican. That news broke yesterday and we talked about it here last night, but we hadn't heard from Cotham herself. You will tonight as she sat down first with our chief investigative reporter Nick Oxner. I am still who I am and there are people who think you automatically make this switch because in their mind and their perception and what they've seen on TV, the Facebook ads that run through them that, you know, now she's going to be some monster, some this, some that. That's not true. I am still who I am. More of that interview in a moment, but first the implications and the reaction today. Cotham's switch gives Republicans total control over legislation in Raleigh. They have a super majority. Republicans alone can now override any veto by Democratic Governor Roy Cooper. Cooper, for his part, calls Cotham's move disappointing. State and local Democrats, they use some stronger words today. They see Cotham's switch as a betrayal and deceitful. Cotham won her seat representing Southeast Mecklenburg County on a progressive platform just this past November. Her district has gone 60-40 for Democrats in recent elections. I'm so angry. She must resign her seat, House seat of 112, and allow us to move on to replace her with someone who represents our Democratic values. Republicans, on the other hand, are celebrating. Cotham's party switch made official at Republican headquarters in Raleigh this morning. We understand that having a big tent with ideas across the spectrum is what makes not just a party healthy, but it's what makes governing effective because North Carolina is that way. And the new modern face of the Republican Party is one that represents the values and the views of most of North Carolina. Before that news conference, as mentioned, Cotham sat down with our Nick Oxner. It was her first interview about the switch. They get into the reasons why she did it and what she has to say to the Democrats who voted her in. Tell me in your words why you're deciding to switch parties. This has been something I've considered for a very long time. And um, I have seen the Democratic Party change tremendously. And when I came here and when I campaigned to, to be here, I really believed I could make change in the Democratic Party. I've always been a change agent, and I thought if I came in, I could make a difference and help guide and understand how the reality works and really focus on being a stateswoman and a leader because we are all supposed to be leaders. I realized on day one I was not welcomed and that they did not want me here. Um, and that was very hard. And I still kept trying and started mentoring younger members, trying to help with legislation and pretty much cut off. And, and that was very disappointing. When you talk about the people who elected you to come to Raleigh, they elected you as a Democrat. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to the people in your district who thought they were sending Democrat Trisha Cotham to Raleigh, that they now are being represented by Republican Trisha Cotham? I'm not committing myself to one policy thing or another, but it is about governing. It is about leading. And I have strong support in my district, despite what Twitter might show. I, I've received an overwhelming amount of calls of support from people who elected me across all party aisles, because I will continue to be me. Obviously, your mom is a democratic institution in Mecklenburg County. What was the conversation with her like when you told her that you're going to switch from being a Democrat to being a Republican? Um, well, both of us are very religious people, and I, I told her I, I need to talk from my heart and what I really believe and what I've prayed for for a while, trying to get guidance and real understanding and, and strength. You know, the, the ability to, the, you know, this is not an easy process to go through. And I asked her to just hear me out and that this is what I was thinking. Um, you know, I said, I want you to always love me. <laughs> and she said, of course, you're my baby girl. 
and I always will, and I respect you, and I love my mama. Our chief investigative reporter Nick Oxner joins us now in Raleigh with more on this big political news here uh, in the state. Uh, Nick, first off, uh, how long had this been in the works? Yeah, I, I don't think very long, but in folks that I've talked with uh, yesterday, today, it seems like this really came to be an idea in earnest sometime last week. Uh, that's not to say that this hadn't been batted around before, but I think we're talking about a week or less. Uh, let's talk about the politics here, the practical matter of this now. So Republicans have super majorities in the Senate, now the House. What does that mean? It, it optically is a much bigger deal than it is functionally or practically because the House came into this session with what they called a working supermajority. That means a supermajority is important because that means you can override a veto from Governor Roy Cooper, a Democrat. Um, but Cotham was one of a handful of Democratic House members who had been voting with Republicans on select bills. And so the Republicans felt pretty comfortable that they'd probably be able to get the votes to override anything they wanted, but now they know they have for sure a supermajority, and that's set in stone. So certainly, at least optically, it's a much bigger deal than it was two days ago. Uh, Nick, certainly one of the contentious issues likely to come up, abortion rights. And we know Trisha Cotham has really been a voice for abortion rights, talking about codifying Roe, even in this most recent campaign. Where does she stand on that now? Yeah, in my interview when I sat down with her last night, I guess it was before her announcement, she wouldn't wouldn't commit herself to any particular policy position, but she certainly indicated a willingness to consider some level of new abortion restrictions. I then finished my interview with Representative Cotham and went over and talked with House Speaker Tim Moore, and in that interview I asked the Speaker what further abortion legislation are Republicans considering this session. Uh, even more of an assured uh, outcome now with the supermajority in both chambers, and the Speaker said they're looking at somewhere around a 12-week uh, abortion ban right now. We have a 20-week ban in place in North Carolina, uh, and the speaker again indicating probably more like 12 weeks. That legislation will probably come uh, pretty soon. Uh, Nick, we don't know what will happen in 2024, but if she runs again, will her district look like it does now, 60-40 Democrat? The speaker uh, has answered that question with uh, uh, by playing coy. Uh, he, he pointed out, didn't make any comments specifically on a district for Representative Cotham, but he pointed out that Republicans were already set to do redistricting the State House, the State Senate, and the U.S. Congressional Districts this session anyways. Um, I, you know, beyond that answer, anyone who has their eyes open here can guess that the Republicans would, would try to protect an incumbent who at this point would be Representative Cotham. Nick Oxner from Raleigh tonight helping us out covering this story. Tell us your thoughts about Cotham's political switch. You can connect with us on Instagram and Twitter using the hashtag OYS tonight. You can also scan the QR code to get to our mobile menu where you can write us an email.